The Boston Celtics have had a lot of success as a franchise throughout their history, and over the last decade, we have never really seen this team have a bad season. But this fan base has a higher standard than most, and they are still waiting to see this current team break through and finally win a championship after another great season that should result in over 60 wins and probably a lot more than that. This team is just perfectly built and almost has no flaws. So I want to talk about how they got to this point because 10 years ago, they were 25 and 57. And since then, they've been stacking up and developing young talent. So I want to talk about the whole timeline in this video. But before I begin, I would really appreciate it if you would drop a like and subscribe. It only takes 5 seconds, plus you can always change your mind. We are on the road to 20k subscribers, and with your support, I believe we can get there super fast. Alright, so starting off all the way back in 2014, this was a year where the franchise was coming off some huge changes. Brad Stevens was hired to come in as the head coach, they sent Kevin Garnett, Jason Terry, and Paul Pierce to the Brooklyn Nets, and basically, they were just resetting everything. So I don't have to explain much as to why they struggled this season. They finished with a 25 and 57 record, and this was their first season not making the playoffs since 2007. The following offseason, Boston made a few moves. They held on to their rebuilding plans as they hung on to both of their first round picks and selected Marcus Smart and James Young. They re-upped with shooting guard Avery Bradley, who was a restricted free agent for a very short time, and one more thing they did was they traded for Tyler Zeller from the Cleveland Cavaliers. So while they didn't make any earth shattering moves this offseason, they kind of set their direction moving forward. The following season, the team was definitely a little bit better. Rajon Rondo was traded to the Dallas Mavericks on December 18th, Austin Rivers was acquired from the New Orleans Pelicans on January 12th, but three days later, he was again traded to the Los Angeles Clippers after refusing to suit up for the Celtics. And in February, Isaiah Thomas was acquired from the Phoenix Suns. They ended up finishing the season just two games under 500 at 40 and 42, and that was good enough to sneak into the playoffs in the East as the seventh seed. It felt like this rebuild was going a bit faster than expected, but they did get swept in the first round by the Cleveland Cavaliers. Boston then headed into the following 2015-16 season with competitive rebuilding in mind. While the Celtics' aggressive rebuilding approach started off on an awe-inspiring track, the master plan turned into a perplexing puzzle over the summer. Boston failed to draw the interest of top free agents and was forced to settle for the remaining breadcrumbs. They did end up getting Terry Rozier in the draft though. Anyways, the 2016 season was an eye-opening one for the Celtics. Isaiah Thomas made it to the All-Star game, and they got the 5 seed in the East, and although they were still a first round exit again, progress truly was being made, and everyone knew the next few off-seasons were going to be critical for the franchise. And we all know what happened next. The following off-season was the one where Jalen Brown was taken in the draft, and although nobody knew it at the time, he was going to be one of the most critical players for this team's path to domination over the next decade. Another big move they made was signing free agent Al Horford as well, and they lost Evan Turner and Jared Solinger. This was the offseason that put this team over the top, and it showed in the season as they finished as the number one seed in the East with a 53-29 record. This truly was a Cinderella season, and the hype around all-star point guard Isaiah Thomas was really starting to grow. For the first time since the departure of Paul Pierce and Kevin Garnett, the Celtics possessed a star capable of regularly altering the course of a game through his own volition. And even though this team couldn't get through LeBron, people were amazed at their progression from 2014. And things only got crazier from here. They actually ended up trading away Isaiah Thomas for Kyrie Irving after all the drama that happened between him and LeBron, and they drafted a kid named Jason Tatum from Duke. They also signed Gordon Hayward, Daniel Tice, and a few other guys. So as much as it hurt Celtics fans to see Thomas go, he was injured, and the hype for the upcoming season was so real. And of course they were matched up against the Cleveland Cavaliers for game number one. And we all know what happened in that game. Yeah. I don't really want to talk about it, it was brutal and a horrible way to kick off the season on national TV. And really, things were just weird from then on. The Kyrie situation never really worked out, but I think everyone knew they had something brewing with Jason Tatum and Jalen Brown. But they were so young and needed to get experience together. They finished the 2017 season at 55-27 and, and were the 2 seed in the East. 
They made it all the way to Game 7 of the Eastern Conference Finals, but once again, came up short to LeBron James, who put up the best season I have ever seen in NBA history. But Jason Tatum did at least have that iconic dunk on him. The following offseason is when Kyrie Irving lied about how he was going to resign, but at least for Boston, they found out LeBron was leaving the East to go to the LA Lakers, so he was out of their way, but there was still so much to do to get where they ultimately wanted to be. However, the Celtics entered the 2018-19 season as the Eastern Conference favorites, not because of which players they added over the offseason, but rather because of which players they were able to bring back. With Hayward and Irving healthy, and Tatum and Brown continuing to develop, this roster had far more upside than the year before, even without any significant changes like I said. But they were kind of disappointing in the 2019 season. They finished as the fourth seed at 49 and 33 and lost 4 to 1 in the playoffs to the Milwaukee Bucks. So basically, this Celtics team had a lot of talent and it was obvious, but the team just never meshed. And they lost Kyrie Irving to the Nets in the offseason, which as we know, didn't really end up affecting this team that much. After this, the Celtics just kept seeing success. They even made it to the finals, but ultimately ended up losing to Steph Curry and the Golden State Warriors. Jason Tatum and Jalen Brown both developed into All-Stars, and over the next few seasons, the Celtics were great. But there still is one thing that fans want that they haven't had in a while, and that is of course a championship. So I'm just going to skip over the next few seasons and move on to last offseason, because that is when Brad Stevens, as the GM, made some magic happen. They of course already had Jalen Brown and Tatum, that was the core foundation foundation of this team, but they were super busy getting guys to play around them. First off, Kristaps Porzingis was brought in in a heartbreaking trade that would send a first round pick and Marcus Smart to the Grizzlies in a three way trade. This move was gut wrenching for some fans, but obviously it had to be made. The Celtics also got rid of Grant Williams, they extended Jalen Brown, and before all of this they acquired Drew Holiday to be their lockdown point guard, and he's an all star type of guy as well. So this team from head to toe was just stacked and they clearly were the favorites heading into the start of the season. And everything went as expected. They've been winning all year, and at the time of this recording, they currently are pretty much a lock to be the one seed in the East, and they have a 57 and 15 record. So they clearly are gonna end up with over 60 wins, but can they capitalize and bring home a title? Only time will tell. But to me, the Eastern Conference is not nearly as competitive as the West, so they have a clear path to the finals. And if they can get there, then anything can happen. That's really all I have to say for this video. I know this was a condensed version of the rebuild, but honestly, the last eight years was a lot of the same stuff. They have been one of the best franchises in the entire NBA over that span. That is in the regular season at least. Thank you guys so much if you made it to this point in the video, and if you enjoyed and haven't yet, make sure to drop a like and subscribe because your support truly does mean everything. And also, let me know what you would like to see next, and until then, I will see you all later.